Okay, hello everyone, I'm Albert, as uh, you know, I'm one of the coordinating uh, committee members of the EAP SIC um, of the Hub project. Um, like Stephen, who shared earlier, I think I'm also not very comfortable with uh, the title expertise, because I think there's a limit to how we can, um, you know, reduce it to a scientifically researchable category. And it's hard to say, because I think we can't really associate expertise with something that um, means that we are excellent teachers. Okay, um, I'd like to just talk about some of the things that I've been engaging in in my professional development. So my main area of uh, research and professional interest is uh, dialogic teaching in the EAP classroom. So what is this? Um, this basically um, is the idea that, okay, um, we'd actually like to go back to the basics in the classroom and looking at um, how you actually interact with a student. So beyond the uh, course notes, the materials that you have, okay, which might sometimes be uh, planned ahead of time, okay, or the curriculum development efforts that you, uh, you know, put in place. What about, I mean, um, this back to basics movement of just looking at how you are interacting with your audience in the classroom? Because that also underlies the way you'd like to prepare your students as members of specific academic communities. So this is actually based on Steve Walsh. Uh, Steve Walsh um, from Newcastle University, currently visiting our Faculty of Education here, who has developed this idea of classroom interactional competence. So there's a degree to which we can say that we are interacting well or with a level of expertise with our students. Okay, which is different from just uh, simply saying, okay, I'm um, interacting with the students. Okay, um, most of the time when I receive my student set of comments, the uh, evaluation comments, I get the word, okay, this teacher is very interactive. But does that always mean, okay, uh, for example, that you're communicative or you're um, dialoguing with the students enough? And this idea of uh, Developing your um, interactional competence is also based on the understanding that thinking and communication skills are in fact crucial okay, for your disciplinary communication. So there are, there's quite a bit of research recently on, um, say for example, I mean, some, I guess, burgeoning uh, you know, uh, efforts really in EAP looking at um, how EAP teachers use their um, the school so means in the classroom, how they talk to their students to engage them, okay? But mostly about, say, um, how to get students to talk a bit more, share a bit more, sometimes um, with an emphasis on quantity of talk, okay? And most of the research agency are not all, I mean, are not uh, discipline specific either. And that's one of the things that I've been interested in exploring and part of my uh, doctoral research project at the moment as well. Right, so uh, there's also, of course, uh, the very familiar, um, I guess, idea that in higher education, uh, because of the class sizes, we often don't get the kind of uh, extended dialogue between teachers and uh, students, and the prevalence of teacher-dominated discourse. So, uh, I suppose, you know, how did it come about? Because I sort of look back on, like, you know, the challenges I had in my initial years as an EAP teacher, I had to teach um, a speech and hearing um, science class in my first year. And that was one of the most unnerving experiences I had because it was all very discipline specific. The materials were excellent, I have to say. Okay. Um, I mean, some of the times when you walk into a classroom and you, you know that the, the materials will be a safe bet, you'd be like, okay, right. Um, you'd be in, the, in your comfort zone. I'll just prepare well and assume that the materials will do the magic for you, but oftentimes um, that's not the case, and it wasn't the case really for me. Okay. So looking at how I would continue to develop, I really had to, um, I mean, obviously there was a time when I said to myself, okay, maybe I'll just stick to a few courses for the moment, because that would actually be a much better way to, to stay focused, and I think, you know, um, people like Miranda and a lot of the members of the management would agree. I mean, you'd like to be focused, but at the same time, how do you also broaden your reach? So increasingly, I was also I mean, inevitably teaching a wide range of courses and involved in a lot of materials development effort. One of the things that actually got me thinking about dialogue with students was the feedback training program that I was actually um, developing for a business um, English in the Discipline course. Okay. Um, really, the idea here is that um, 
you know, if you were to look at, say, for example, I mean, this idea of dual professionalism, as an EMP teacher, you probably have a degree, okay? At best, you might actually have um, a master's degree in TESOL and a PhD degree in linguistics or cognitive disciplines. But really, if you look at the range of courses we teach over here, um, you can see the ones that are with an asterisk are the ones I've taught. So, surveying, economic science, social sciences, dentistry, and education. So, a whole range of courses here. How do you get yourself ready for all the challenges that each particular context would present you with? So, one thing here that I have always thought, you know, that was crucial, it was to think about saying, how is language ever, because, you know, if you have this kind of distinction in mind, first year EAP, core university English, for example, that's our course, is that really a general course? Even in that course, I've come to recognize quite a few distinct features over there which are not really general. Okay, and there's also Highland's idea that, is there any such thing as non-purpose, purposeful language learning. We always learn a language with purposes, specific purposes indeed, in mind. So, um, these are the, some of the comments that I would receive from, from my uh, you know, colleagues. Okay, so stars, you're definitely encouraging, you have fun ways of organizing groups, your um, classes are interactive and sometimes competitive. Okay, but then, you know, at the same time, I'd also get comments like, okay, uh, keep your TTT, your teacher talk time to 30 to uh, 7.30, okay, 16.40, obviously this is a, a Delta-trained colleague who, who's been through all that and she was saying, yeah, I mean, keep your teacher talk, talk time to, um, you know, a healthy level. Of, obviously, I, I'm still trying to find that healthy level myself, okay, allow students to take turns and report back. So, what I actually uh, did, I mean, what I started doing, um, well, based on Steve Walsh's, um, you know, recommendations in his book on developing your, um, interactional competence was, I started actually recording myself, okay, um, in a specific context, and I transcribed some of my teaching, for example, in a, an architecture classroom. You can see the ones in green are the questions I would ask, for instance, okay, um, to probe students to talk more, just on an, I mean, on an individual basis, and the, the blue ones over here would be to open up to others to respond, so that there'd be a I mean, naturally developing dialog uh, dialogic uh, kind of atmosphere, as we would hope, probe and uptake questions, okay? Obviously, um, recently, of course, you might even be thinking about, um, what about student responses, okay? Um, I'm not going to be going into student responses, but there are ways, in fact, also to look at whether a healthy dialogue is, is one thing that um, is, in, I mean, emerging in a classroom, because, after all, in the EAP classroom, we are looking at this division of labor, the vision of labor between the students who are the subject specialists of a um, particular discipline and the role that EAP teachers always look at students as competent members and in that process you are doing, I mean, you're basically having to talk to them and engage them to also engage them and appreciate the fact that you honor their specialist knowledge and you are also offering to, I mean, um, to them your specialist knowledge as um, a language teacher. So, to sum up, okay, I'd like just to, um, you know, raise the point over here about the classroom interaction skills as being quite central to my development as a teacher in different disciplines, um, based on the fact that I can't really get to know enough about many of the disciplines I, you know, um, that I've never studied, and students have, you know, to be given, I mean, they, have, they need to be given the opportunity to share with me um, what, you know, they know about the discipline, and the way to do it is through the discourse in the classroom. Thank you so much.